Okay, if you've suffered a hamstring tear, whether it be small or big, I've got five essential exercises for you to do right from the acute phase through to strengthening that you don't have to do in the gym. You can do it at home, you just need a few things like bands and maybe a ball and a bench or a sofa that allow you to help it recover and get it back online ready for training again. So whether that hamstring is small or big, now if you had a small hamstring tear, it might take you four weeks. If it's a big one, it might be up to 12 weeks. These exercises will cover that period and get you back where you need to be. First one you need to work on is isometric. So this is after around about day three or four, depending on how big that tear is. You might have to have a big rest period, so be guided by your physio. But if you're allowed to start doing some isometric work, the best is with a band, and it's really easy. So get your little booty or mini loop band like this. You're gonna go and go into like a hamstring curl position. This is your first one you're gonna work on. And you might need to work on this for a week or so, but it's definitely the first one to try and get the hamstring working. So, cause you wanna contract that hamstring without moving the knee through range. So we don't wanna go and have a lengthen hamstring and contract, relax, contract, relax when it's really acute. We just wanna get it contracting to try and drop the, the weakening that's gonna happen from the tear, but we can't put too much demand on that tear, otherwise we're gonna make it, you know, worse again. So with this one, if you imagine like you're on a hamstring curl machine, you want to start in this position. So you've got to be able to get into this position for a start into that sort of prone lying with your knees bent. What you're going to do, if you imagine if my right hamstring is going to be the one that I want to work on, I'm going to move my left left foot like that. Now what you'll find is once you've got the band like that, you're going to have to move it to probably the back of the heels like that, okay, otherwise it's going to flip off. So once you've got that position, if you think I'm using my right hamstring to keep my knee at 90 degrees, and I'm going to push my left leg down. As I push my left leg down, the demand rate increases on my right hamstring to keep it there. So I'm pushing, 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 pushing to hold it, and you're going to try and hold that for 10 seconds. Now, you may find that when you've got an acute hamstring, that's far too much. So you might come back and just make that a lighter band, or you just push it only a little bit. So you put a little bit of demand on, can you hold that for 10 seconds? You back off, you can let the hamstring relax, wait for 10 seconds and repeat. Now I would aim for these exercises, to do isometric contractions, you're aiming to get to 30 seconds, okay? I would aim for maybe sort of four to six of these. So if you could hold that for 30 seconds, you do four or six of those. But remember, the demand is about how much you push with the other leg. And you can practice this at home on your good leg if you like. So if you've got a hamstring tear and you want to know how much load to put through it, practice on your good leg, so swap, the other, swap it the other way around, see how much your good leg can handle, okay, before you start launching into the other one. Because it is isometric, but it's a very beginner exercise, and you need to keep it at that low level to make sure that you don't go and irritate that hamstring and cause more problems. So that position there, a little bit of load, going for 30 seconds. If you can't handle 30 seconds, you go for 10 seconds as a start point. And so if you imagine four to six lots of 30 seconds, if you're only doing 10 seconds, you do need to do more of them as long as you're not fatiguing. So once you've done that one, then you're gonna work on, when you progress past that, that gets really easy, you can tolerate that. You then need to move through range. But what I want you working on is just the eccentric phase. So we're basically working on the way backwards. Now you'll need a band, something like this. This is a sort of mini power band. By the time you finish this stuff, you should be able to get onto something like this. However, if you're quite weak, you'd have to go down to maybe just a very thin, power, uh, thin TheraBand not a mini power band. You'll need something like a bench. You can do this on the ground, but I find that if, you don't, if you're not elevated, what tends to happen is when your leg is straight, there's no tension on it. So when your leg is straight, you still want a tension, meaning a downward angle of that band, okay? And you've just got to position yourself that when your leg is out straight, there's a bit of tension there. Now, tricks with this one, when you put this on, you put your foot in, right, like this, you want to make sure that you don't sort of have it that it's not going to flip off okay so in that position there that's not going to be any good because that's just going to flip off so what you need to do is put around the back of the heel all right so if you think of i'm going to be like this okay the back of the heel is the best way to do it then flip it around okay so you know if i can get this right there it is there it's not going to pull off now Okay, you see how that works? So just make sure you've got that sorted so it never comes off at that point. Then you go up on the bed, or your bench, or it could be your sofa if you like, and come forward 
country, you've got a little bit of tension down there. So see how there's still some tension on my leg? And you just angle yourself to maybe where your knees are just off the bed there. Now, what you don't do is just pull straight up. It's going to be too much load. So you aim for an eccentric phase only. So you help it with the left leg. So if this is my right hamstring that I'm training, I pull up with two, so my left leg's helping. I take my left one away, and then I slowly lower down like that. Okay, so grab the left one again, pull up, hold it, take it away. There's a little isometric contraction there, and lower down. It's a little bit awkward, okay, but it's so good. This is like doing a hamstring curl machine in the gym, but if you're not in the gym and you're at home resting your leg, there's a great way of training it without you having to go into the gym. So two up, take it away, and one down. Now your rep range with that, sitting around maybe eight, maybe 10, you probably don't need to go to 12 in the initial phases of that, but just make sure that the crucial part is not having this too heavy, okay? If you find that a mini power band, this is too much, just downgrade it. As long as you're getting some hamstring work done, you just don't want to be that person who overloads it too early. So your second phase, like I said, is the eccentric training of the hamstring. So you're trying to replicate hamstring curl bench at home, just use a band for that. Now, number three, which is the single leg deadlift. Now, it is a deadlift pattern, but it's single leg because we want to work on just the hamstring that is involved, the injured one, not the good one. So. With this, I would probably go for a band as well. Remember, if you're at home, these are for home exercises, you don't have many weights, that same band would be quite helpful. Plus, they're very forgiving when you're trying to train through rehab because as you lower down, when the hamstring gets longer, the band gets easier. So when the hamstring shortens and gains a little bit of strength, then this gets tighter. So it's all relative to what the hamstring's doing. What I would work on is putting one foot, so again, I'll, I'll show you on my left one if you like. My left hamstring I'm training, so that's the one that's on the ground. This band, you pretend like you're grabbing a bar, okay? So at this point here, when I'm down, where I'm gonna be at the bottom of my deadlift, I want a bit of tension there. So when I'm at my top, like I said, that's gonna where the tension is. So when you do a single leg deadlift, you're gonna go back with the good leg, all right? Have a little bit of a bend in the knee. Let that band carry you down to that point there. So it's very forgiving there. I'm still using my hamstring, but there's not much, much load there. And then when I come up, when I'm in the safety zone, there's more load there. So I don't have heaps of load at the bottom. Whereas with the weight you will, you have the same weight at the top and at the bottom. So you are sort of hamstring a little bit, excuse the pun, about how much load you can put on that. Whereas this one, you can put a quite a little bit of load at the top. Then as you drop down and that hamstring lengthens, you get that other leg back and you work on where your vulnerable parts of that hamstring are where it's really long, the band's looser. Okay, so there's less load. It's all relative to how long that hamstring is. So that single leg deadlift is a really nice one to work on because it's closed chain, safe for the hamstring, but it works on that sort of hip extension hinge position movement, which is what you need the hamstring to do. Because you've got the curling movement you're doing, but you also need a deadlift movement, and then you need a hip extension movement as well. So we're gonna go through that next. So once you've progressed through the first couple of weeks, you're trying to go from the isometric work to the eccentric work, to the deadlift work, then you need to work on bridging work. And I like using the elevated bench like that, we call it an elevated bridge, and this is really, really good because it targets those hamstrings so well, but it uses your hip extension movement, which you're gonna do things like squats and hip thrusts and deadlifts and that sort of stuff to try and get the power back in the hamstring. Nice and safe too. I would start with two legs. You'll find if you go straight into one leg, it's too much load for the leg, so you gotta build up to that. So you'd spend the week or two trying to go from two legs, which is this movement, okay, to one leg, okay? There's a big difference in that. And there's some progressions from going from two to one, but essentially, if you look at where my knee is, I'm not in a 90 degree position, okay? If I do that, I'm gonna use my buttocks, more of a glute bridge. So I need to come back so my hamstring's a bit longer through here, and my knee angle is longer, and that is gonna generate more load through the hamstrings, less through the buttocks. So when I push down through my heels, and up here, I can really feel that through the mid belly of my hamstring, all right? So you'll be doing rep range like that, okay? Going up, trying to push your heels down through the bed or down through the bench using those hamstrings. When you get strong with that, you find that's easy, there's no pain with that. You can go up on two and down on one, all right? And then you can progress to, if that's easy, just up and down on one, which is basically 
a hip thrust, but we're using it for a hamstring, so it's a hamstring elevated bridge thrust, and that is gold to work on the hamstring strengthening just with your body weight. And the last little progression for home is using a ball for hamstring curls. So you've basically gone from isometric work to eccentric work to a deadlift type work to a bridge work, and now you're gonna put it all together. You're gonna to do hamstring curls in a bridge position, okay? And the ball makes it really unstable. So you're gonna basically use all of your legs and your pelvis and your core control to try and get this working. This starts integrating your hamstring back into your core, and this gets you, if you can get to this point here, then you're away. You know, you're doing sprinting work and running work and all the sport related drills that you need your hamstring for. You should be at that stage where you can do that if you can do this exercise. So, with this one, same sort of position like the elevator bridge, you're going to go from that position. See, I'm sort of in the same position here. I want to go up into the elevator bridge and then I want to do a hamstring curl. So, from this point here, you're going to go up into the elevator bridge. My hamstrings are already on and then you load them up with a hamstring curl, you bring them back. Now you can just keep going. If you can handle, if your core's on, your glutes are on, if you can handle this position and you just do hamstring curls like that, that's fine. You might get two or three, drop down, reset, wait, and go again. As long as you're in that eight, 10, maybe 12 rep range, and you're gonna aim for the three sets of this, then whatever suits. So if you can do 10 in a row and then drop down, that's fine. Progressions from that, similar to the elevator bridge, you can go to one leg. It gets really hard at this point, but it's really, really good for those of you who've got a significant difference between left and right. So if you're strong, but there's still a difference on that weaker hamstring, then you go to one leg. Now what you can do is come up with two first, get your balance, lift one leg, keep your balance. You can use the elbows if you like, and pull in and back. Pause between each one, pull in and back. You notice that I'm going in quick and out slow, okay? In quick, out slow. And that should be the tempo that you work on those things. So if you can do that one, you're ready to run, you're ready to start sprinting, and you're back on track. See you next time.